So, hello everyone, my name is Alois Castellano. I'm also doing a PhD at the CEA um, under the supervision of, of Francois Jolet. But um, today I will present some works I've been doing on uh, machine learning and methods called machine learning assisted chemical sampling under the supervision of Francois Botin and Johan Boucher. The goal of the method is to accelerate the computation of finite temperature properties. And when we think about finite temperature properties, what we are re really doing, at least in the classical limit, is a high dimensional integral. So we, we integrate some property we want to average times um, a Boltzmann weight. And since this integral is very high dimensional, in practice, we use a finite number of samples that we call configuration, and we compute a weighted sum on the, of the observable on those, on those uh, configuration. The, in an ab initio setting, the most used method to do this is to is ab initio molecular dynamics. So it's very simple in the sense that we just integrate Newton's equation of motion. And if we add a thermostat to those equations, it's possible to generate configuration according to the canonical ensemble at some temperature. And in the end, our average is just an uh, arithmetic mean over the property you want to compute. It's a very powerful method, but it has a very high computational cost. For for some quantity, some for some properties, we need from ten to, from from thousands to tens of thousands of forces evaluation. And if we do this using DFT to compute the forces, it can take up to months or even be unreachable for some system. So we need methods to accelerate the generation of those configuration. Ab initio molecular dynamics is very expensive, and one way to accelerate it is through uh, recent domains that have emerged, which is with the machine learning intertermic potential. Uh, so with those potential, we can can observe a drastic acceleration of uh, to compute properties, all while keeping a near DFT accuracy. The acceleration comes from the fact that those potential are less expensive than DFT, while the D the accuracy comes from the fact that they are malleable in the sense that we can describe with it almost any potential surface, and also they are data driven, which means that they can reproduce any data we give them, but it has the, draw the drawbacks that we need to be very careful uh, into the selection of the data we give them uh, for the training. And usually, or very often at least, a way to generate the training data set is to use ab initio molecular dynamic, which, as I said before, is expensive, even though some methods have emerged to, to reduce the, this cost. But I want to, to to talk about something with that we do in the end when we are doing a study with machine learning potential. So we started, we want to study a DFT system with this potential surface, and we fit a machine learning potential. But in the end, when we do some study, we are not stu studying anymore the DFT system, but we are studying the machine learning um, uh, system. So that's uh, when we compute averages, in the end, we, could, we are computing averages with quantity coming from the machine learning potential. So the, the, the method I'm presenting today is based on this very simple idea. What if we use the machine learning potential as a distribution function? So what we want to reproduce here is not anymore the, the position surface, but the Boltzmann distribution of the, um, of the DFT system at some certain um, condition. That the, this change of, uh, of, view, of point of view will allow us to focus on a very narrow part of the potential surface. We can forget. Uh, so the part of the surface potential that don't interest us, and focus on representing the distribution function. And in the end, to compute an average, an average, we will do a weighted sum on uh, with weight coming from uh, on configuration coming from the machine learning potential. But the properties are coming from DFT. And the question that it raises is how to obtain the best weights. To to answer this question, we will start by uh, by by writing the distribution of the DFT of, as p and the distribution of the machine learning potential as q. And we will use a mathematical tool, which is called the kullback leibler divergence. This uh, this quantity is the is can be can be seen as a measure of the similarity between two distributions. It's always positive. And the smaller this quantity, the closer the two distributions are. So much so that if this quantity is zero, it means that the two distributions are identical. So what the, what we will want to do is minimize this quantity. But it's not very easy to work with it as it as it is written here. But with a simple manipulations, we can transform it to an equivalent free energy problem, which is called the gibbs bogoliba free energy, which is defined as the free energy of the machine learning potential, uh, plus the average of the difference between the DFT potential and the machine learning potential, the average being taken uh, for the machine learning distribution. This quantity is always um, superior to the, to the 
DFT free energy, and uh, this is an equivalent problem to the to the callback labeler divergence, meaning that if we minimize this quantity, this quantity with respect to the machine learning parameters that we call gamma, we are sure the best approximation of the DFT, distrib of the DFT distribution on the best approximation of the free energy. So what we will want to do is get the gradient of this uh, gibbs bogle of free energy equal to zero. And we can show that this can be due in a self-consistent approach, meaning that we start with some configuration weights. We train a potential. With this potential, we generate new configuration and new weights, which allows us to train a new potential. And we do this until uh, convergence. And to be to and, uh, here is a more complete scheme of the procedure. So we start here with a given number of configurations. For illustration, let's say we start with 20 configurations. We can create this configuration, for example, by doing uh, low accuracy molecular dynamics, ab initial molecular dynamics, or with a classical potential. Or for the example I will show later, just by taking an ideal crystal and displacing the atom around the equilibrium position randomly, just selecting 20 configurations like that. Then here, using uh, Abinit, we, we do density functional theory computation of those configurations. So we get the energy, the forces, and the stress. And then we can compute weights on some properties that we want to compute. With the weights on the DFT data, we can uh, train a machine learning potential, which allows us to do some molecular dynamics. And we're back to the, to the start of the cycle when we extract some configuration from the molecular dynamics. And we then can do all this cycle uh, until convergence, until the property we want to compute are converged. And those property can be free energy, can be the phonons uh, at finite temperatures, the pair distribution function, but can also be, for example, uh, electronic properties such as uh, the electronic uh, density of states. With this method, we've, we can see two sources of acceleration. First, a reduced number of DFT calculations. Since all the configuration are completely decorrelated in their construction, we can need only hundreds of configuration maximum. Uh, compared to the thousands of, or ten of thousands for uh, initial molecular dynamics. Also, all the DFT calculations are done in parallel. Here we generate, let's as, as I said, 20 configuration. Well, we can do the 20 configuration in parallel. Uh, I will stress on some points about uh, the, this method is compared to usual machine learning potential method. Here the results are not is not the machine learning potential, but the results are the configuration and the weights we have generated during the simulation. And in the end, the properties we, we compute, we compute with DFT observable. So all these energy and forces, we could use the machine learning potential, but we use here the DFT energy and forces. But we can also compute properties, as I said just before, from uh, some properties that are not available with the machine learning potential. So in the end, the system we are studying is the DFT one. We are not studying an alternate machine learning system. We are studying the DFT system. The only thing is that we do an approximation on the weights and the configuration we are using. Uh, it's a really a sampling method. Uh, this can be seen as a replacement of ab initio molecular dynamics. So some words of how I implemented this method in, in Python. So to show how to make, uh, to, to make Abinit in link with, in, uh, as a tool in a bigger framework. So. I used uh, ASC as an atomic environment manipulator, which allows me to manipulate supercell, do molecular dynamics, write and uh, read uh, some files. Everything machine learning related is computed using lumps. I use, for computing weights, I will speak a bit, a bit later, I use a package called PIMBA. And of course, all DFT computation are done with Abinit. For the machine learning potential, I use so the SNAP um, potential for spectral neighbor analysis uh, potential from LAMS. A very quick description of, of all this work. Uh, we've got this, for each atomic environment of one atom, we describe, we map this environment onto a descriptor space, which is a, a vector of fixed length. And then we just assume that there is a linear dependence between the descriptor, the descriptor space and the energy. So the potential is written as a sum on atoms on the descriptor space of the descriptor time a coefficient gamma, and the, this is those coefficients that we will adjust to create our potential. And the thing with the method I'm presenting here is that the fit is done by weighted least square. That means that when we are doing the fitting, we are including the weights, so the weights that are the Boltzmann weights, the weights uh, that we are constructing all along the simulation. And speaking about those weights, uh, for the 
To compute them, I use a method called multi-state Bennett acceptance ratio uh, using a package called PMBAR, MBAR for Python. Uh, without going into too much detail, it's a free energy method that allows to compute the weights of all configuration generated during the simulation. What I mean is, uh, let's say we start at first iteration, we generate 20 configuration, and then we, we generate 20 more uh, at, the iteration, at the next iteration. Instead of throwing away the 21st configuration, we use MBAR to re-rate, to re-weight all the configuration, and we can do now an average over 40 configuration. And we do this for every iteration. So we have, in the end, a lot of configuration to do an average. Then, uh, finally, before going to some example, uh, some word about the property we can compute. In the end, we can compute any properties that can be written as a static canonical average. And for the example, I will focus on the pair uh, distribution function. I will use a method that is called force sampling. It's not really important. It's just a low variance method to compute the PDF. And also on finite temperature phonons with uh, temperature dependent effective potential method. Again, I will not go into much detail for this method because you will have a presentation on this on Friday. The important thing is that we compute uh, an effective interatomic force constant matrix, a tensor model, uh, so temperature dependence, which we can be, which can be computed with uh, as a canonical average of forces and displacement. With those force constants, we we can obtain uh, temperature dependent phonons, so the phonons that are renormalized by the eff interesting effect of temperature, so from temperature dependent phonons. So now let's go to some example. Mm -hmm. uh, OK, it, perfect. So my first example will be on, a, on uranium BCC at a temperature of 1,200 Kelvin on a system with 128 atoms. I use a descriptor uh, that has a 51 um, uh, dimension, so 51 parameters to, to adjust at each step. And um, uh, here on the phonons on, on the pair distribution function, the blue curve is from ab initio molecular dynamics, so very expensive uh, simulation. And the red one is from uh, the new method, MLAX. And the goal is to MLAX to reproduce the best possibly the ab initio molecular dynamics. And as we can see here, even for URMBCC, which is very complicated system because it's, uh, it explores very large phase, uh, part of phase space, we obtain uh, accurate results with a lot of um, particularity of the of the spectra. To explain why, we can see uh, here, I plotted here the correlation between the energy and forces from the machine and the potential compared to the DFT energy and forces. But what I've uh, put, what I've, uh, what I've shown with the colors uh, is that the, um, is the, in the Boltzmann weight of the um, configuration from which, it, from which the quantity is extracted. What I mean is, if a dot is green or yellow, it means that it has a, an important Boltzmann weight, while with a purple or blue color, oh, purple or blue color, it has a low Boltzmann weight. So with the self-consistent and weighted least square, we see that we obtain a, a machine learning potential that is very focusing on describing the best possibly the the configuration that we are interested in for to compute the average. Uh, I won't talk about this here because of the time, but and in the end, with this uh, for uh, this simulation, the IMD, the ab initio molecular dynamics needed four thousand configuration to to compute the, um, the averages. While with this new method, we need, we needed only one hundred and forty configuration, and we did twenty configuration in parallel at each time. In the end, if we in human time the molecular dynamics needed two months to, to compute, while I needed only to wait two days to have the results with the machine learning assisted canonical sampling method. Uh, for those other example, I will just show them uh, rapidly to show what kind of system we can study with this uh, method. So for example, here is the silicium at 900 Kelvin, so at high temperature. And we see here very good results again with a very, very low number of configuration, only 60 configuration to compute this average. Uh, the next example is MGO at uh, very at extreme conditions, so 400 GPA at 8,000 Kelvin, so condition for of uh, interior of planet. Uh, again, very good results, and it shows that we can do extreme conditions, but also um, multi-element systems. So here we have two, two types of, uh, of atoms. And for the next example, they are not DFT, but it's just to show what we can do. Here, I've got a classical potential with aluminum copper. 
uh, it's a solid solution, so we can also do alloy with this with this example. If the phonon dust and we got a, uh, again a good um, reproduction of the molecular dynamics results. Um, the same for the pair um, distribution function. And finally, again with a classical potential, just to show what is that we can do liquid uh, with this method. So I will stop on this um, on this slide uh, on this summary slide. I'm, I will thank you for for your attention, and I'm ready to I'm, I'm glad to answer to any questions that you might have thank you Luis. so there is uh, one more question in the chat by Pierre Paul de Gros is about your definition or the fitting of the way so the question is what are the features and from where comes the linear something um sorry I can't hear you very well so the question is what are the features yeah. yeah. Fitting the weight. And where, from where does the, the linear assumption come from? Uh, so, um, I'm not sure I understand completely what's, what's the question. Yeah, so maybe you, you can uh, precise your question. Maybe it's, yes, it's do, a do you hear me? Website. Yes, we can hear you. Yeah, so yeah, it's yeah. basically, so uh, it's on the, uh, this slide, so you see how the atomic environment is mapped. So my question is, what, what do you exactly use specifically? And then on the second part is, a linear dependency is assumed. I was wondering why a linear dependency was assumed. Uh, well, the, it's a very uh, uh, discussion about the, how the snap potential works, but in the end, um, so this potential, it does a very complicated uh, transformation from this atomic environment on each descriptor space, each uh, vector, each uh, point in the vector uh, of the descriptor space, describe in the end uh, the interaction, uh, the, the neighbor atoms of, um, uh, of the atoms we, we want. So in the end, we, we assume that, for example, uh, the fact that, that uh, two atoms are separated at this angle between this one, we say that it uh, gives this, um, this energy. Uh, I'm not sure how to, to answer really your question, but it's a, it's a basic um, assumption in, a, in machine learning potential. Uh, okay, so uh, I'll look into SNAP and then. Yeah, then. Okay, okay yeah. thank you. That's the best thing to do. Uh, and then there's a question by Gabriel Anthony who's asking Is there some kind of interface between ability and lamps to generate the machine learned uh, interatomic potential? I'm sorry, then again, I, I don't really, I don't have, uh, I don't heard you very loud. Look in the chat, Alois. Yeah. Look in the chat because the question is there. <laughs> okay. Up. No, uh, for okay for the interface. No, I had to do the interface. Uh, you, that's what I'm. That's what I, I was showing here is uh, for the interface between lamps and abinits. I asked to to use ASC as a um, as a link between the two. Uh, so ASC is uh, written that to be able to work with lamps and with abinits. So in the end, you just have to write some code that can do uh, then the, the the links between the two. Okay, I don't see any other question. Did you have to update the link between ASC and uh, and Abinit at all? Is there anything that's not functional yet? Uh, yeah, I had some, to do some something to for for the Abinit part because um, for the moment in ASC the link between Abinit in ASC is not that complete. I had okay. some problem, for example, with the data set or with the DFT plus U for some cases. Uh, it works well for other, uh, for more classical, uh, let's say, uh, more classical link. Uh, but sometimes you have to to get a little bit on the inside if you want to for it to work. Okay. 